Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and I again do apologize for the delay. I do believe that we have our technical issues. So we shall hear back. Can everyone hear me now? Recorded Brandon, how are you? We're just going to start the meeting. Can you hear me okay? Brandon, can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? So now we're going to call to order um, the Court of Revision for the Galbraith Drain. Uh, note the start time at 614. We hereby open the Court of Revision dealing with the Galbraith Drain. Moved by Julie, seconded by Sai. All in favor? Carried. At this time, are there any dis, uh, any disclosures of any pecuniary interest of any sort? None declared at this time. I would like to now ask the clerk for any appeals that have been received by the court in reference to this particular drain. Yes, the court has been in receipt of one court of revision, uh, appeal to the court of revision, sorry, and that was from Paul and Tanya Clark. Each member of the court has been in receipt of that appeal as well as the engineer. All right, thank you, Pat. At this time, um, any comments from the engineer? I'd like to welcome Brandon Widener from Spread Associates Engineering and Architects. Brandon, would you like to make a comment on this particular drain? So good evening, everybody. So the appeal we received is from um, the Clark family. Um, just so everyone's aware, they're the property exactly at the bottom end of the drain. The drain starts at their property, and that's where the open ditch, and that's where it outlets. Um, we did meet the Clark family on site, and we explained some of this to them, um, and I believe a couple of counselors were there as well. Um, their appeal is, you know, essentially assessment based. Um, now, just so everyone has an idea in their property, you know, we are proposing to put a new drain in, um, twinning the existing drain, and it is fairly large tile in that property. I believe thirty inch. Um, that goes through their property. Now, in their appeal, they also talk about damages. Um, that would be what I would call the allowances. Um, the court really has no authority to change those. That's uh, something that could be dealt with at the tribunal or should have been dealt with at the consideration meeting. Um, now, when we look at their appeal, I believe I sent in to Pat earlier today um, how we, let's say, would come up with the costs are being attributed to. Um, there should be some two attachments, I believe, were sent, and I'm hoping everyone on the quarter vision got it. Um, the first section would be what I would call the cost breakdown. So I've highlighted where the Clark property would appear in this cost breakdown um, because it's the first section of the drain. It's the first page that you've been sent. Um, they are essentially assessed. So what we do with the drains is we break them into components. The first component um, conveniently is entirely on their property. So that is all the work that is on that property. Um, so when you look at it, you'll see there's some costs on the left. There's uh, the backfilling of the ditch. There's the outlet pipe. There's the tile. There's some stripping. There's a catch basin being installed and uh, the laneway crossing. There's also some items for you know exposing the existing drains and the contingency allowance, the engineering and the allowances. If you add all those numbers up, the total cost of that portion of work for that that section of drain is $81,000. Um, when you go over to the part that's highlighted, you'll see their name, J&T Clark. Um, we have assessed them at a rate of 47.5%. That's what I would be calling the benefit to that property. And that's shown on uh, the, 
assessment schedule as benefit. So of that portion, you'll see it's 47.5% for the portion of the 81,000, which is 38,480. So that is the portion that we've assessed them as benefit. Now benefit is for better control of surface and subsurface water. Um, essentially that's what it covers. It's for the portion of the drain on their property. So the remaining of their assessment is on a different sheet. So if you open up the part that's called, um, well, we're looking at the breakdown, there's a section called worksheets. And you go to page one on the worksheets. Um, excuse me, it's at the final rate sheet. I believe uh, you go to page one, it'll be highlighted. Their name will be highlighted as well. You'll see the benefit. In that category, it's about 38,480. Oh, you have it up now. See, Pat's really good. Um, then there's another number, which is 1,700 and change. So, as you can see, we've assessed them for their acreage. That's the first column, the total hectares. Um, there is no, um, typically on drains like this, we charge woods at 50% rate. So, there was no reduction made. There is then a, a portion called location factor. So, Location factor we have at 0 0.4. So that essentially is saying that they use 40% of that section of drain if they were going to use it to drain their lands. Or the majority of their water comes in about the 40% point as an average. So you take all those numbers and multiply it together, it comes out with an equivalent hectares. And that's added all up with all the other outletting. So as you can see, all the other owners are on there, and that is their portion of the outlet. Um, the Clark portion is about 1714, I believe. So you total those two numbers together, and that becomes the total assessment. Now, that is the total assessment before grants, before allowances. Um, and, you know, the breakdown was provided on what their out of pocket expense would be with all those numbers included. So you take the 40,196, which is their total assessment. They receive a grant of 13,399. And we have a portion of their allowances at 4,390. The total out-of-pocket cost is about 22,407. So you also, with this information I provided, you have how the entire drain is broken down. So um, you can see it in the worksheets, they're not so crucial, but in the what I would call the breakdown sheets, the other sheets, um, you'll see this section is charged at 47.5%. When you go through it more detailedly, and you guys can do that, you'll see that as you go up the drain, the percentage of benefit increases. So that's typically how we do it. As the tile size drops, the benefit to that property becomes more because that portion of their water is a much larger contributor. And it puts more emphasis on the property and not so much on outlet. So the majority of the cost on their property is being picked up by outlet. And another thing um, on, I believe the Clark family has realized as well, there is a large benefit on this property. Now we are filling in uh, the overflow swale on their lands, which gives them a little better workability of the land. And that's included in the cost estimate as well. So. Everyone else is picking up a portion of that work, which is to me a direct benefit to the property. But if anyone has any questions, um, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you, Brandon. At this time, we'd like to hear if there are for any verbal appeals from landowners. Uh, the purpose of the court of revision is to hear appeals regarding the schedule of assessments only. The court of revision has no authority to change the engineer's report in any way. The schedule of assessment may be altered, but the total must remain the same. If one assessment is reduced, then the other assessments must be increased to balance. So just for clarification, and I do believe that uh, Mr. Clark is on the line. Paul, are you there? Or do you have any uh, comments? So this is your portion that you can make comment. Okay, I'm uh, I have no problems with them filling in the, the old creek. Yes, that is our benefit. But as for the tile going through my property, my water can't go into that because we're actually going to be tiling backwards up 
to get into the into the outlet. Um, as for surface water, I have no surface water that can get into it either. So I, I totally feel my whole obligation to this project is just for the filling of the old ditch in. I don't think I should have to pay for my neighbor's water to come through my property. You're muted, Matt. Sorry, I was muted. So I'm sorry. Uh, do you have anything else to add for that? No, I I think I've I've I think I it's, I've covered what I have to say. Okay. Brandon, any comment uh, back from that for the question that was raised? Um, well, it's I guess it's a matter of. Um, I understand what Paul's or Paul's saying, and uh, you know that's one way to look at it. But when I look at it as a general watershed, um, yes, he's paying for the water to go through his property, but the water is going underground. It's not causing erosion. There is no swale there, um, and that's where the benefit comes from. Like if you were to look at it, like I need to get more capacity up to the neighboring lands, which um, he is beside Mr. Haverkamp. So, like, if I needed more capacity, for instance, the cheapest way to do it would be to put a ditch in. Now, there's great benefit in not having a ditch there. And we have two tiles, so we're going to have a 21-inch tile and a 30-inch tile to control the water underground so he can essentially work over top of the ground. And the majority of the flows are conveyed underneath. So that lowers his erosion and all the benefits towards that. So that's where we disagree because essentially he's asking to be he receives no benefit then his assessment should essentially be zero well that's that's not really how we assess drains using the Tajan method thank you brandon Uh, do we have any questions from the Court of Revision members that are present? Please raise your hand so I can see if there's any questions from Court of Revision members. Julie, go ahead. No, I think um, Paul had another comment, Matt. My apologies. The screen's a little, still the technical issue, so my apologies, Paul. Go ahead. I'm. I still like in the drainage act, it says you should not have like people cannot dump water onto your property is the way I understand it. So I still don't think I should have to pay into a tile for my neighbor's water to go through. Brandon. You know, everybody, um, when you look at this drain, this drain has a, a long outstanding history. It's been done multiple times. There was a report done in uh, 1939, as well as another one, I believe, done in 1975. And in those reports, um, you know, this farm was assessed benefit before. So I believe this farm, for instance, in 1939, um, they were assessed a hundred dollars benefit of a drain at that time, which was twelve hundred dollars. So, you know, it's nothing that hasn't been done before, and I believe that the the name's been corrected in the report. It used to be owned by an H. Clark, so I assume that's Paul's father. Um, like this drain's been done multiple times, and the assessments are done in a way that they're similar to what's been done in the past. So, you know, I just. We try to eliminate or um, you know replicate what's been done as well as use the current way we do it. And as you can see, it's very similar to the way it was done in the past. All right, thank you. Oh, Paul, you have another question? Uh, just another comment, Matt. The, the swale has been 
spilled in by the other farmers. So the water that they're talking about does not get to me. There's a natural uh, knoll in the farm next to me that does not let that water from the side road get to me. Like if, like Brandon's going off the reports that are almost 50 years old. We have equipment out there now that could prove this to everyone. You know, I guess the, the question, this is an existing drain under an established bylaw and understand some people, uh, well, essentially all the upstream landowners who had a swale on their property have filled it in at one point or another. That being said, the water still heads towards Paul's. There's lots of fall on this drain, as you can see on the profiles, and it, it does head towards Paul's. Um, so I guess, it's an existing drain under an existing bylaw. The route's been established over multiple reports. Um, and we're assessing them similar to the previous reports. So, and I, I stand by my assessment because there is a large benefit to that property. Um, and he has charged the lowest benefit rate of all the properties that have drain with my new project. And you can see that in the cost breakdown. So the the benefit rates range from Paul's, which is the lowest of 47 and a half, and I believe they go all the way up to 60%. And you will probably see that in the upstream Haber camp lands on the other side of the side road. Thank you for that. I guess we've already come back for other questions of landowners. Uh, it's just been requested of me that uh, seeing as how this might require some other deliberation and also um, possibility, I would like to, if the committee is in agreement, in agreement with this, to defer this decision pending further deliberation until the next council meeting will host a court revision, just because the time is we have other people back up to other courts to do this evening. So if that's what uh, that is what has been recommended to me. Would the committee be in agreement with that? Is that correct? Okay. That is unless the committee um, is willing to go ahead with the sustainment of assessments as are reported into the initial report. Any members. Julie. Uh, thanks, Chair Richardson. Just for clarification, perhaps it could be um, Scott or Pat. If we sustain um, the report as it is right now and the assessments, Mr. Clark can take it to the tribunal to debate the assessment portion of it. Is that correct? So. He nodded that that is correct. So if we're not going to instruct the engineer, which we can't to change the report, our hands, in my opinion, are really tied and it is to let the legislative process take its course so that you can then go to uh, the tribunal um, if necessary and whatever. So I'm questioning why we would defer. Um, I guess I either Scott or the clerk uh, Fairfelts, if you could give us some comments on that, because I don't believe there really is a need for any further deliberation. Thank you. Go ahead, Pat. S certainly, I can ex further explain. the In the opportunity that North Perth Council would be meeting here in the council chambers, therefore the, co the court would also be meeting here the drainage act allows the court to take um, the meeting off site and have deliberations, consider the requests from the clerks in order to um, maybe lessen their assessment or not. It's very difficult right now virtually to have that opportunity to deliberate. So that's the only reason I was suggesting it. If the court of revision wishes to move forward with the assessment as presented by Spriot, 
that is your decision that we were just providing another option. And at the end of this, the chair would be mentioning that this can be appealed to the drainage tribunal and that would be the course that the clerks could take. Uh, thank you, Pat. Um, Terry, do you have any comment? Well, I feel that uh, uh, probably if this hasn't been worked out by now with uh, with all the landowners and whatnot, I think that probably we should move it to the tribunal and because uh, our hands are tied, we can only do what we've been told and and whatnot. So uh, maybe it should move on to, to the next step. Thank you. Thank you, Terry. All right, we've had the, the committee has spoke for that, so we have no other questions with everything. Um, the court of revisions decision, we have, we can sustain the assessments of the engineer uh, with revisions if required. All parties to the drain will receive a written notice to the court of decision, which will contain additional information on the process to appeal the decision of the court of revision to the Ontario Drainage Tribunal. So for the Court of Revision hereby sustains the schedule of assessments of the engineer to the report for the Galbraith drain dependent, prepared by Spriat Associates, engineers and architects. Would anybody be willing to move that? Lost my people, I think it's, do we? Seconded by? Sorry, lost my people. I'll second it. Uh, all, all in favor for of that motion? That's okay. That is carried. Bear with me, folks. So we'd like to hereby close this court of revision dealing with the Galbraith drain. Moved by. Julie and Terry, all in favor? Terry. Bear with me one moment, folks, as we can move on to the Holsworth drain. So just bear with me one moment, please. And uh, Ben Gowing, if you are with us, uh, engineer for GM Blue Plan, you're up next. So just keep bear with me one second. Yeah, I'm here. Good evening, everyone. Again, we are back, and I'd like to note the starting time at 6:38, and we are now going to conduct the court of revision for the Hallsworth Municipal Drain. So, I'd like to call this meeting to order. So in order to officially open the court of revision, we hereby open the court of revision dealing with the Holsworth Municipal Drain, Municipal Drain 2021, moved by Julie, seconded by Cy. Terry, Councillor Siler, my apologies. All in favor? Terry. At this time, do we have any disclosures of pecuniary interest? None declared at this time. I'll ask the clerk for any appeals that have been received by the court. We have not been in receipt of any appeals to the Holsworth Municipal Drain 2021. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to invite comments from the engineer, Ben Gowing from GM Blue Plan. Plan. Ben. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have too much to say. We weren't uh, made aware of any appeals from any of the landowner. Um, everything was running smoothly as far as I could tell. Okay, thank you. At this time, now is the opportunity for verbal appeal appeals from landowners. 
The purpose of the Court of Revision is to hear appeals regarding the schedule of assessment only. The Court of Revision has no authority to change the engineer's report in any way. The schedule of assessment may be altered, but the total must remain the same. If one assessment is reduced, then the other assessments must be increased to balance. Point for the Holsworth Municipal Drain. Do we have any questions from the Court of Revision members? Unnoted. At this point, do we have any questions from landowners for the Holsworth? We have no questions from the landowners. All parties for this drain will receive a written notice of the Court of Decision, which will contain additional information on the process to appeal this decision to the Court of Revision to the Ontario Drainage Tribunal. So at this time, the Court of Revision hereby sustains the schedule of assessments of the engineer to the report of the Holdsworth Municipal Drain 2021, prepared by GM Blue Plan Engineering. Moved by. Carrying, seconded by Julie. All in favor? Carried. I would hereby like to close this court of revision dealing with the Holsworth Municipal Drain. Moved by Terry, seconded by Julie. All in favor? Thank you. One moment, and we're going to gear up number three, everyone. Pay it this hold tight. Good evening. I would like to call to order uh, this court of revision for the Burnett Municipal Drain. So I open the court of revision dealing with the Burnett Municipal Drain 2021. Moved by Julie, seconded by Terry. All in favor? Terry. At this time, I would like to invite any disclosures of pecuniary interest. None declared at this time. Can we hear any list of appeals of assessment? Please. The court has not been in receipt of any appeals in regards to this municipal drain project. However, the court has received a piece of correspondence from a Mr. Brubaker, Brubaker, sorry, and that was more dealing with the construction, and that was for your information only. Thank you. At this point, I'd like to invite any comments from the engineer, Mr. Dietrich from Dietrich Engineering Limited. Hello, how's everybody doing? Um, yeah, I've um, we have not received any. Um, correspondence. The only correspondence I just received it today was a copy of the letter that uh, Lloyd Brubacker had sent to the municipality, and that's 100% correct. It was uh, it's it was in regards to the uh, uh, scope of work that was proposed in the report, um, and you'll see from that letter you've probably had if the members of the court have had a chance to read it. It has nothing to do with he's not appealing his assessment on on the project. It's more uh, to uh, his. Uh, an opinion on on the drain itself. Uh, this uh, drainage system that what we're proposing here or in this report, and we've been through it at the, in in much much detail on site with several meetings, and also at council on June this on I think it was June the sixth or seventh when we when we considered the report. That is the only time when council can deal with making changes to the design or the scope of work. So that time period has passed. We're into the. Uh, 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 assessment stage of the process. And um, to my understanding, there is no appeals. Um, the existing drainage system that's being replaced is an old drain that was put in back in 1965. Actually, James Howes from Listel was the engineer at the time. Um, and uh, it's grossly, uh, there has been issues with it. 
Um, recently, it's um, it's in sections of it are in very very poor shape, and it's grossly undersized. It's only about twenty percent of the capacity of the drain drainage system that we're 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 proposing here. So to uh, to provide a a, a, minis- a proper and legal outlet for all lands within the watershed, we have to size the whole drain for today's standards, not just the lower end. So. You'll see in our report, we are replacing the drain or it will be replaced through the Johnson barn and through the Brubacker barn to provide outlet for, um, for uh, uh, Lloyd and, and the upstream owners as well. So um, that's um, a very briefly uh, um, uh, the, uh, uh, this, this project. And again, no appeals, so there, I really don't have anything to add to that. Thanks, Bill. At this time, now it's time for any verbal appeals from landowners. The purpose of the Court of Revision is to hear appeals regarding the schedule of assessment only. The Court of Revision has no authority to change the engineer's report in any way. The schedule of assessment may be altered, but the total must remain the same. If one assessment is reduced, then the other assessments must be increased to balance. Do we have anyone in the audience joining us in the meeting tonight that would like to make comment about the Burnett Municipal Drain. You notice that uh, Elizabeth Johnson is with us. Uh, Elizabeth? Are you here for the... Elizabeth, uh, do you have anything? Okay. Thank you very much. At this time, I'd like to invite any questions for Court of Revision members. Third, do we have any other questions from Lance? And seen. All parties to the train will receive written notice of the court of decision, which will contain additional information on the process to appeal the decision of the court of revision to the Ontario Drainage Tribunal. At this time, the court of revision hereby sustains the schedule of assessments of the engineer to the report of the Burnett Municipal Drain 2021 prepared by Dietrich Engineering Limited. Moved by. Carry, seconded by Julie. All in favor? Carried. Hereby, I'd like to close this court provision dealing with the Burnett Municipal Drain. Moved by Julie, seconded by Terry. Thank you. All in favor? Terry. Reminder everyone that this will, meeting will be the audio portion of this meeting will be uploaded to YouTube uh, when other technical glitches are sorted. So this will be posted on YouTube for everyone to see. Thank you, everyone. And uh, we will get to council as soon as we possibly can. Thank you for joining us and enjoy your evening. Okay. Have a good evening.